Cabinet ministers defending the government's decision to hold early elections, a new political third party formed, and the tourism minister responding to the U.S. travel warning. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lissy Bastian with your JCN News. It's Tuesday, August 24th. It's good having you with us. Deputy Prime Minister, National Security Minister and the Health Minister all defending the government's decision to hold the country's general elections even in the midst of a health crisis. Those ministers spoke with reporters this morning just before the weekly cabinet meeting. Our Laurencia Smith was there and files this report. Cabinet ministers defending the government's decision to hold general elections in little over three weeks. Even as Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who in his recent national address has gone on record to say that this has been the worst public health crisis in our modern history. Deputy Prime Minister Desmond Bannister, Minister of National Security, Marvin Dames and Health Minister Randwood Wells all responding to critics. Minister Bannister was frank with reporters when he says that it's very important for the government to have election in the shortest possible time. Very important for us to have the election in the shortest possible period of time. Uh, the government, it's important for the government to have a mandate on what they're doing. Him and people can say what they want to uh, governance, but it's also important for it to be in the shortest possible. That's what we're doing. In the shortest possible time, uh, we have imposed restrictions for the health and safety of Bahamians, and I, I urge everybody to follow and comply with those restric restrictions for the health of everybody who you're in contact with. Over the last 17 months, the country has recorded more than 1,700 cases and over 300 deaths. Minister Dean shared that the Parliamentary Registration Department has brought on more people to ensure that health and safety protocols are enforced and adhered to during the elections. When is a good concern? Well, according to the health expert, um, persons, when you read, there are more than, what, six, eight different variants out there? And, and according to some persons, again, uh, health professionals globally, they will tell you that uh, we expect to, to be living with uh, COVID maybe for the next two plus years. So when, when is a good time? You know, uh, you know, there are persons out there who will come and say these things, but they can't, they, they can't offer you any uh, sensible alternative. Okay. So what? Oh, this is not a good time. All right. It's not a good time. When is a good time? From the health perspective, Health Minister Renwell Wells says that health officials have requisite health policies in place, and at the end of the day, people must adhere to them. Minister Wells told reporters that there will be a very defined way in which the voting process will be carried out to ensure that there is no continued spread of the virus. At the end of the day, folks are going to be able to sanitize before they actually dip their finger in the ink. Uh, we're going to ensure that you have that 70% uh, alcohol uh, sanitization. Um, it's going to sit for a couple of seconds before you actually put your finger inside of the ink. So that will limit the opportunity for the spread of any potential virus. Uh, but like I said, all of this is being looked at in regards as to how we're going to continue to conduct a kind of safe um, working environment for the Bahamian people. Because really the election is more of a working environment. Uh, and it's an environment where the Bahamian people are going to have an opportunity to truly uh, realize their established right in seeking to uh, elect a government of the day. The Prime Minister has returned the mandate that the Bahamian people gave to him back to them. And the Bahamian people will then return that mandate for those whom they choose to continue to carry on with their business. The general election is set for September 16th and advanced poll day set for September 9th. I'm Laurentia Smith for JCN News. Former Prime Ministers Hubert Ingram and Perry Christie chime in on the upcoming general elections, which is set for September 16th. Back in 2017, the Minnesota administration on the campaign trail promised to set a fixed election date. However, that did not happen during this term. Mr. Ingram, who served as Prime Minister from 1992 to 2002, then again in 2007 to 2012, says that he supports a fixed election date. Once in the election, I, I call the election in March of 1997, um, which was about five months before the end of my term. Um, and thereafter, I determined that we ought to move towards a fixed election date as far as possible. And I therefore um, held the election in 2002 in May. Terry Christie came along and he held it in May 19, 2007. Um, 
I came back and I held it in May 2012. Perry Christie came back, he held it in May 2017. Um, I thought I thought the public ought to have a good idea as to when elections are going to be held. We gave everybody an opportunity to register the vote. We announced in advance, listen, if you want to register the vote in this election, please register by the end of the month or by the 15th or whatever day it was, and gave people lots of time to be able to register, transfer their voters, etc. Asked if he thinks Dr. Menace may have called the elections too early or if he thinks voters are caught off guard, Mr. Ingram says that he can only speak for himself. Meantime, Mr. Christie, who served as Prime Minister from 2002 to 2007, then again from 2012 to 2017, didn't clearly state his position on where he stands with regard to fixed election date, but he provided the formula to winning an election. That, that given the snap election, Prime Ministers have the right to do that. He indicated that he wanted fixed elections himself, but he, does, he didn't do it. And so our system allowed him to call elections. And the, the people of the Bahamas will determine. Now, the final point I want to make is this. In the last 20 years, no one has won a second term. And I, on reflection, I have concluded that unless someone can come in and create 80,000 jobs, they're not going to win an election. All right? Because there are just too many people in too many different places, particularly young people, who are out of work and have been out of work for a long time. And I, I, I'm, I was the victim of it in terms of election. Ingram was the victim of it. Election. I think this will be the victim of it. Elections are set to take place Thursday, September 16th, with advanced polls taking place a week before on September 9th. It's been said that Bahamian people have been asking for it and they have finally delivered. Just about all third parties, with the exception of the Democratic National Alliance and the Coalition of Independents, have joined forces to form the UCM or United Coalition Movement, a new political party that says they have united to speak with one voice to fulfill the goal of truly transforming the Bahamas and break the back of the PLP and FNM old board Boys Club, which they claim has sucked the country dry with only minimal benefits and opportunities for the mass majority of Bahamians. The new party, United Coalition Movement, will be headed by newly elected leader Cassius Stewart, leader of the BDM, and his deputy will be Ali McIntosh, servant leader of the BCP. Adrian Francis of Operation Sovereign Bahamas is the chairman. During his maiden speech, UCM party leader Cassius Stewart, who will run in Central and South Eleuthera, said he is thrilled about the new developments and the dynamic team of candidates they have put together to take down the PLP and the FNM. According to Mr. Stewart, the full slate of 39 candidates will be revealed in the coming days, headed by independent candidates like the outgoing Speaker of the House of Assembly, Halston Moultry, in Garden Hills. Mr. Stewart and a fired-up room filled with supporters say this one is for the country. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.